Welcome to the Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Mar Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor. And you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So we still are trying to rally here. I'm going to cover off transports a bit today. And if we get a little bit of time at the end, I'll briefly look in on the industrials because we always want to make sure that they're moving up as a pair. Um, so that's kind of how I want to cover it off today. I, I do want to make sure that um, people realize how exceptional we, we are at in terms of the market. Um, momentum, which is high. Uh, doesn't mean it can't go higher, but we're at some of the highest levels in 100 years. Uh, so hopefully that's apparent to everybody. We're definitely at the highest level in 20 years um, across numerous indexes and numerous ETFs and numerous uh, different places in the market. Does that mean it can't go higher? No, uh, but it definitely means that uh, for those that are, are not paying attention that there's a there's a reason to start paying attention, um, if nothing else, for self-preservation. So uh, first of all, here's the NASDAQ today. I'm recording this on Tuesday, about a half hour before closing bell. And you can see we're testing the prior high. So it'll be interesting to see where we open on Wednesday morning. Uh, but right now, the NASDAQ composite is sitting right up against the prior highs. Now, I do want to cover off a few things about the NASDAQ because it's kind of uh, glaring where it's at here. So recently what we've seen is, you know, this was kind of the volume around 4 billion shares a day uh, trading through most of the summer. And then November, we started to tilt up slightly and we were getting up into 5 and 6 billion. In November or in January, we're now tracking up around 7 billion shares a day, which is quite heady. And what that looks like on a weekly chart is these sort of volume candles. And again, all of a sudden we've got immense volume coming into the market and we um, haven't really made much pro progress over the last three weeks, right? That's what the first chart showed us. Um, so we're sitting here wondering if all of this volume is going to amount to something or it's just a change in ownership from strong hands to weak hands. So that's one of the big questions on my mind as we go forward here. So I want to uh, be aware of that. Now, if we just scroll up to the top here and type in the NASDAQ 100, what's interesting is it's not the NASDAQ 100 that is getting the volume. And as you can see, uh, we're not breaking out to new highs here. So it's quote, small caps that are doing the hard, heavy lifting. Um, I think when I look through here, um, when I go down, whoops, sorry, down to the bottom, the one thing I want to point out is, you know, we're rolling over on our full stochastic, we're rolling over on the PPO, we've got sell signals, this is the second one since we got one in September. The last one was in February. If those dates don't uh, don't mean anything to you, no problem. Uh, but this is February, this is September, and we're sitting right here. So this is a pretty important uh, place on the graph. But as you can see on this weekly chart, we don't see any real um, extreme volume. If anything, our volume is kind of back in the range of the 2019. It's slightly higher um, January, February, but really in the range of September through December. And that contrasts sharply with the uh, NASDAQ composite where the small caps are literally ballooning. So there's a... a uh, newsletter that I found on uh, Twitter and it was, hey, if you haven't read anything entertaining, come and try this one. And so um, I, I jumped on this newsletter. It's uh, I'll cover off who, who it is at the beginning, but there's a, a quote about how high things can go. And this is the co-founder of Sun Microsystems back in the 1999 to 2000 bubble. He said, Two years ago, we were selling at 10 times revenue when we were at $64. At 10 times revenue, to give you a 10-year payback, you have to pay 100% of revenues for 10 straight years out in dividends. This assumes that I can get that by my shareholders. I have zero costs of goods sold, which is very hard. This assumes zero expenses, which is really hard. This assumes I pay no taxes, which is very hard. This assumes with zero R&D for the next 10 years, I can maintain the current revenue run rate. Now, having done that, would any of you like to buy my stock at $64? 
do you realize how ridiculous those basic assumptions are? You don't need any transparency. You don't need any footnotes. What were you thinking? So anyway, he goes on to talk a little bit more about it, but let's take the shortcut here. Try 20 times sales. So, um, we're, we're talking about companies that are trading at 20 times sales and uh, this particular, uh, hedge fund, um, is just putting out these charts, but here's Tesla 25 times revenue. Here's Neo, uh, 43 times revenue, um, NVIDIA Corporation, 22 times revenue, the Trade Desk, 50 times revenue, and was it 60? Um, and Twilio, 32 times revenue, Shopify, 54 times revenue, Pindado, uh, 33 times revenue. So these are pretty heady levels. Anyway, just to be aware of how stretched we are, um, I think it's good to make sure we're balanced. Now, I just want to uh, fast forward to the top here. This is Bronte Capital, and this is their December newsletter. Again, I just got the link off Twitter, but uh, you know, it doesn't always help to use my voice to communicate it. It's nice to take somebody totally out of the picture, uh, out of my reference point, and use it. But I think the the important thing to to talk about. This is a fund out of Australia, but they just you know very succinctly phrased how stretched some of this stuff is. Now, when I mentioned um, that the market is, is quite uh, over over enthusiastic, um, this was one of the charts I presented in my newsletter this weekend. Let me just clean up a couple of things here, uh, clear all, and I'm just going to put the the um, PPO indicator on the bottom here. And the reason I want to do that, and I'll, I'll just clear off all the moving averages, and we're going to make it a line chart as well. And update. And now I'm going to change it. Um, as a pro member at Stock Charts, you can make it 100 years of data. Okay. And we know that the PPO is currently at 4.216 on the S&P 500. So we can go down here and we can put a horizontal line 4.216 and we're going to do that line in red just so it's a different color and let's set this height to be a little bit bigger okay so when we look what you can see is um, first of all we're at the highest level in 20 years and we're at one of the highest levels in 80 years. Um, and then we have the extreme of the early 30s coming off of the crash of 90% of the, the stock market in the, the 29 to 32 bear market. And then we bounced up and obviously these were extreme rallies off the lows, which are okay. Um, the, the important thing to remember though, that we're up at a level where whatever, pick a number, we're in the top five, top 10 uh, momentum levels in the last 90 years or 80 years for sure. And so if you want to, if you're aware of that, that's cool. And you just realize how sensitive the market is. But if you're not aware of that, I think it's a pretty important time to at least realize the level of froth and excitement we're currently enduring. And I fully expect the market to, to go higher um, in 2021. Of course, I don't know if that'll happen because we'll have to watch and see how the charts play out, how the virus plays out, how the um, how people get over the debt that they took on to, to get through the virus and have they got enough money to get through the other side of the virus. Those are all big questions. Anyway, with, with the current setup here, you know, in, back in 55 to 75, there was a 20-year period where you didn't get up to that level. And the market um, then proceeded to pull back. And then in the 80s, we got up to this heady level three or four times. In the late 90s, we got up here two or three times. And we're on our second push here. September, we were up around 4%. We're a little bit uh, lower now. We ticked down actually from last week. But Again, the point just generally is we're in really, really, really frothy times. So try not to get too um, uh, excited about this trend continuing is probably the nicest way to say that. Okay, 
So I promised to talk about the railways and, and what I've got here is we could look on um, a candle glance view. And the idea behind candle glance is just to kind of get a quick look, right? Um, these are my candle glance here is set up for um, daily data, I believe. And what you see is, you know, uh, here's United Airlines pulling back. Spirit Airlines looks like it wants to, to start to break out. America is still kind of working lower here. Alaska, they're trying to push up into the top right hand corner at least um, based on the last year. Uh, sorry, the last uh, four months, not the last year, the last quarter, um, trying to push up into the top right hand corner. And when we get out of the airlines, we're starting to see other stuff like here's the UPS chart and it's rolling over and it's testing four month lows. Um, Expeditors International rolling over a bit. FedEx down quite hard, actually. 300 was its high, 240. It's already dropped 20% from December highs. Um, Matson International um, still holding in the top right-hand corner. Anyway, when we go through these charts, most of them look okay. I think one of the things that's starting to worry me is some of these railway charts are starting to drop relatively precipitously. Um and, and as that starts to happen, I think we, we need to be aware of that. So anyway, let's go look specifically on each chart. And, and the reason to do that is um, it's nice to kind of quickly glance, but we also want to get some bigger picture rather than just the last three months. So if we click on 10 per page, there's only up to 30 charts in this chart list, so it's relatively quick. Um, but here's United Airlines, and again, really just trying to... I'll call it hold it together until better days start to arrive. Um, save Airlines, Spirit Airlines. It, again, that chart made it look like it was doing pretty well. And as you can see at $25, it's um, still 60% off the highs of $65. American Airlines, no question here. There's a, a pennant building, um, nice basing structure. And when it starts to break out of that, that should be relatively um, strong. Alaska Airlines out of Washington, um, just uh, a lot of big business out of there. Um, maybe a little bit of travel to Hawaii to get away from the, the virus. Um, but what we see here is the stock has made it above its June highs, but just barely. And it's kind of monitoring that today uh, to start this week. It's actually holding in there. We want to see if these airlines can actually finish the rotation and start to break out through the top side. I sure wouldn't want to be too bearish on them, but again, the real question is, does this just migrate sideways for six months or a year? Delta Airlines, um, again, not doing a whole bunch here. And GATX Corp Commercial Vehicles, this is nice, breaking out to new 52-week and, and all-time highs, very nice. United Parcel Service, UPS, so this is the one I was mentioning is rolling over. This does look like a topping structure to me, um, you know, something like it did in 2019 and then it rolled down quite hard. In 2020, it, it did, or 2017, it kind of did the same thing. 2018, the whole stock market fell from for the fourth quarter, so it actually bottomed in December. But um, it's not um odd or it's it's normal for this stock to kind of roll over in January and so um, looks like we're seeing that again expeditors international just holding sideways really hasn't done anything since September um, some negative momentum starting to show up here where the momentum curve is moving lower FedEx Corp this is clearly rolling over we're at four month lows and um, you know, giving back a little bit. Uh, Matson International, up in the top right, that's that's a nice one. Marine Transportation. Uh, Kirby, more Marine Transportation, I believe. Yeah, breaking out $55. So it's trying to hold in this range. Um, container shipping has actually been uh, relatively strong lately. So here's CSX Corp. Again, trying to break out to on that January high and really stuck here sideways for eight or 10 weeks. Um, nothing wrong with the chart. I think the important thing to be aware of is it doesn't really have the upward momentum. And what I don't like is you're starting to see things like this, where the, the PPO is actually giving you a sell signal. 
And that would be the first one since the February sell signal, since the um, June, July sell signal of 2019. So starting to see these sell signals show up on this particular uh, group of stocks. And again, you don't want to wait until they're at the bottom of the curve. You, you, you want to wait until they're at the bottom of the curve to buy, but you sure don't want to wait to sell till they're at the bottom of the curve. So these are all starting to roll over and these are the railroads now that we're into. So out of the airlines and into the railways. Uh, CP Rail, um, got some really nice photos of a CP Rail train moving through the mountains below a golf course this summer. Uh, really, um, you know, kind of impressive to just see the train snake through the mountain valley. Anyway, on here, what we're seeing is momentum curve has gone flat. The price is still working up. This has been a very strong chart for many, many years. Hard sell on it? No. The only thing I would say is the scooter ranking is starting to underperform, and at 50%, it's just an average stock in the large or in the mid cap group. Uh, Union Pacific holding up in the top right hand corner. Nothing wrong with that. PPO is still pointed up. So that's nice. Scooter ranking starting to let go, becoming more than average uh, or a little less than average. Canadian National Railway really hasn't done anything since September. So we've seen this in a lot of the transports where they've kind of run up and now they aren't doing anything. So the question is, can the economy keep rolling forward and continue to push these stocks higher? And that's a, a very good question we need to ask. Kansas City Southern Corp up in the top right hand corner, so very bullish. Again, when you're looking at these real quick, just where are they in the in the chart? Almost all of them are in the top right hand corner. The big thing I'm seeing is the scooter ranking is starting to weaken on them. This one's still holding up. It's not bad. Um, Again, it's not down in the bottom 10% or anything like that. Uh, rider systems, this one's rider truck rentals and transportation, uh, very well holding up at new two-year highs, so it's okay. XPO Logistics hasn't done anything for six or eight weeks. It's allowed to pause. Um, scooter ranking starting to drop out of that top category again. PPO looks like it's getting close to rolling over. Uh, Landstar Systems, that's still making higher highs and really just broke out above the September highs. And in August, it broke through a major resistance level. That chart still looks good. Look at how wide the distance between the signal line and the main main uh, momentum indicator line is holding up. Um, when you have a big wide gap, that typically means you've got strong momentum. And on Snyder International, or Snyder National Trucking, huge trucking company, the Orange Trucks, um, this is up, but not in the top right-hand corner. And you can see the scooter ranking is living down here in the bottom half of the chart. That's not great. I do like the fact it's turning up above zero right now. And I like that the scooter ranking is trying to get out of this lower 25 or 30% level. When it can kind of do that, that's a, a good place to look for the stock to really start to make a big move. Um, we can see this on the full stochastic when it starts to turn up. Here's here's a prior example when the stock just got stuck under 50 all the time and then started to take off. That was a pretty nice uh, move higher. So I like the fact that it's bouncing at zero. I like the fact that the lows on the um momentum indicator continue to get higher and higher lows so that looks pretty good uh, the real question is can it keep going i guess here's ch robinson worldwide um, logistics trucking refrigeration all that kind of stuff um, stock is okay um, the momentum curve shows a lot lower here so it'd be interesting to see if it's got any horsepower to go a little bit higher JB Hunt uh, breaking out to new all-time highs here just in early January and now just kind of holding that level. Nothing wrong with the chart. PPO still pointed up. Want to make sure it stays up there because you don't want to end up with negative divergence. Okay, um, so in general, the transports are still up in the top right-hand corner. Some of them have lost quite a bit of momentum, um, but they still don't look broken other than FedEx and, and UPS. Those are kind of the only two charts really testing three-month lows. Now, um, this group, the other group I wanted to talk a little bit about is the industrials. 
And so I've made up a group called Industrials Non-Transport. So I've taken out the transport component so I could look at them separately. And the idea behind uh, transports and industrials tracking each other higher is if the industrials chart is going up and the transports chart is going up, that usually means the economy is in good shape. Now, if one of those starts to break down, let's say transports start to break down, it's suggesting there's a weakness in the industrials coming. And then the way we confirm that the two are breaking down is the industrials roll over with the transports. So if we go, um, I'm just going to go back to this NDX gallery view here and just put in the dollar sign DJUSRR. That is the railroads. And what we see um, here is the railroad chart still looks up and to the right. There's nothing wrong with that chart. Again, everything is still holding up. PPO is still holding up, but starting to kind of get up to the level it typically rolls over. And again, we're up at the 5% level. So we rolled over in 2019 around that level. In 2018, uh, we were up around that level in 20, uh, early 2018, we we're up around that level. So this is kind of a common place for it to start to relax. And so we've been hovering sideways for four or five months. So we could have said that about it back in September. The chart's been relatively sharp, um, working its way up to the top corner. So it still looks okay to me. So as long as everything is still heading up, that would normally be a good signal. So that's one of the things we I like to watch for. I always like to know um, what the momentum indication is on the railroads. And then uh, just try and check it against the industrials and the the preferably the non-transport. So one of the concerns when you when you analyze something is that you could be looking at stocks that really have a small market cap and don't really affect the bigger picture. Um, so they could be whatever, a small biotech that goes ballistic because it has um, something new and it takes off, but it doesn't really have the weighting of an Apple or a Google or whatever. Well, in the transports, we have things like Boeing and Caterpillar and big companies like that. So what I've done here is I've run a simple scan on my chart list called industrials non-transport, um, which just so happens its favorite list is whatever. And the way you get that is you just go make a chart list. Um, and I, I picked the chart list I had, right? And so you can see on each one of these stock charts tags it with a list number. So I didn't create that. That's just something internal to stock charts. So I go grab that list and put it up here. And then you type in this line rank by market cap. And by doing that, it's going to sort the stocks based on the market cap that they are. And then you save it to a chart list. And when you save it into a chart list, um, you can save that sort order. So that's what I've done. Obviously, Boeing is the biggest transport stock or sorry, the biggest industrial stock. Um, and it's, there's nothing wrong with the chart. It actually looks very solid to me. One of the things we're starting to see is it looks like it's going to hold this 200 level. PPO is slightly above zero if it can start to turn up here. I think that's what you want. Um, I really like this signature. So what is this signature? So one of the things I've noticed about the scooter ranking, so stock charts came out with the, the technical ranking about 10 years ago. And one of the things they did, it was actually 2007. One of the things they did, um, when you go back and look at charts, a lot of times you'll see they'll start to accelerate up. They'll pull back and on the pullback, that's a really nice time to watch them. And if they start their rise again, that usually um, is pretty heady. And, and the reason that that works um, if, if you were to analyze a stock for a six month relative strength high or something like that, and it starts to head up, that's going to put it on people's radar and then it pulls back a little bit. Well, institutions are smart enough that they actually watch for that pullback and they're trying to buy size. So they don't want to just pay top dollar every time something starts to bounce up. They, they start to write it down. Okay, the stock's been behaving better. Let's wait for it to pull back a bit and we'll start to buy a bit. Um, so we see this trend and it pulls back and then it'll take off to the upside. You don't always get it like back in here. You didn't get it, but look at the smooth run that was um, for a couple of heady years there from 122 to 350. 
Um, so here what we see is it briefly ran up, pulling back, and now looks like it's setting up for its next rise. So I particularly like that chart. And it's the heaviest market cap in the industrials group. So it's pretty important. Scooter ranking is just turning back above 30. And again, you're terrible. And then all of a sudden you start to outperform. Uh, something's changing in the stock. And so I, I particularly like the setup here. Raytheon doing kind of the opposite, right? Where it's it's it hasn't been a top performer in the last five years. It basically gets into the top quadrant and falls right away. Um, and it's just sticking down in the bottom half here. It recently tried to bounce up and is stuck. Uh, the one thing I would say is, it's not like the stock doesn't go up. It just doesn't go up faster than the S&P 500. It basically performs, um, let's just say 50% in here would be the middle of the large cap group. It, it just kind of hangs around, goes slightly below that, slightly above that, but it, it's kind of the center axis of the large cap group. For this whole year, it's behaved roughly on the negative side of that table. So it hasn't really outperformed the S&P 500. And that's what you see in this purple area. The stock's still one of the bigger um, industrials, right? Um, based on market cap. And it's pulling back. Maybe we'll start to see if it can turn up. After all, it did get that kick on the scooter ranking. And maybe it'll start to run. Caterpillar has been up here for a while now, and it could stay up here for a long while. Nothing wrong with it. I would say the PPO looks pretty stretched at, at this heady level and, and might be worth watching. Um, Lockheed Martin downtrending in momentum here and in price. Can it finally break through this and start to turn up? Maybe. I think the important thing to notice here is the scooter rankings on these large cap industrials are still pretty weak. And that compares it to all of the peers in the large cap group, not just the industrials. So Deer has been doing very, very well. And one of the reasons is ag lately has really started to explode. So that's high. Um, construction is also another uh, thing that Deer is involved in. So starting to see a lot of that type of activity. Anyway, this, this chart looks very strong. I see nothing uh, wrong with it. Airbus gapped up here, and then it's basically been holding sideways. Hasn't really outperformed yet. Illinois Tool Work, this is still climbing. Hasn't done anything since September. Not my first pick. ABB, Industrial Machinery, broke out to new highs. That uh, just looks bullish, right? It's sitting up in the top right-hand corner. Scooter ranking has come down to 50. Um, if it doesn't turn up right away and kind of start to outperform more, that's going to be a problem because you don't want it to become just an average stock in here. So we need to see it start to continue its upward progress and become a top performer again. Fanuc, I have no idea what they do. Uh, pushing up nicely. It's at almost three-year highs here. Uh, very nice looking chart pointed up and to the right. I will say the PPO up around 10 is pretty extreme. Northrop Grumman trending down. So a lot of these uh, defense contractors, stock's not doing that great. Waste management um, trending down. So that the one thing I would say on a lot of these industrials is the large caps haven't really had a lot of positive momentum. There's a few that are starting to perform well and, and their scooter ranking is nice and high, but for the most part, we're not seeing a lot of them now. This Parker Hannafin chart looks very, very strong. Scooter rankings or the momentum indicators higher than it's been in a long time. Nothing wrong with that. So uh, as we go through here, we want to make sure that these large cap industrials actually start to pick up speed and, and start to improve. So that would be one of the things that I would uh, keep an eye on over the next while. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recordings on Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Don't forget to check out gregschnell.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.